everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining today. My name is Brian Naden. I work for Snowflake. I'm the director of data sharing. And I've got my trusty colleague here, Bruce. Hello, everyone. Uh, so Bruce is a senior sales engineer on the Alliances organization. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about the Snowflake and Looker integration. And we're going to run you through a, a live demo. So um, we had a few technical difficulties, so we're kind of short on time. So we're going to try and get through this as fast as possible and, and get you guys into the demo so you can actually see the product in action. Um, before I go ahead and, and get into, um, into the content, um, who here has heard of Snowflake before? Oh, OK, this is good. It, things have changed in a year. Uh, that's a good sign. Um, who here, if raise of hands, uh, is a Snowflake customer? Oh, wow. OK, this is good. Um, any of you using data sharing today? Great, we got some prospects. I love it. Um, all right, so the agenda. We're going to do a quick introduction to Snowflake. Sounds like uh, everyone's heard of it, so I can run through that pretty quickly. Um, I'll talk a little bit about data sharing, uh, something that I'm super passionate about. Um, then we'll talk about the integration with Looker Blocks. Um, I think there's some great synergies between not only Snowflake and Looker, but also data sharing and these Looker blocks and being able to make this shared data come to life. Uh, and then we'll run you through a quick, a quick demonstration of both data sharing on the Snowflake side. Um, I'll walk you through kind of a little bit of a story. And then we'll also um, have Bruce come up and help me because he's the, he's the Looker expert uh, and show you how you'd visualize that data uh, and join two pieces of data sets together. So um, the first thing that I want to kind of talk to you about, it sounds like some of you guys already know about Snowflake, but, but what makes Snowflake different and why is this such, a, such an awesome technology? Um, first of all, it's a single place for data. And what do I mean by that? Um, it's a place to store not only just structured data, but also semi-structured data. So a lot of times we're seeing things like the IoT revolution and things are coming in in JSON format. Uh, Snowflake is a repository to be able to store all of, data, all of that data and be able to query it natively uh, with performance. The big thing with Snowflake is scale concurrency. So you're able to not only you know, store all the data that you want uh, with uh, an elastic storage, but you're also able to be able to query that with performance and bring in your own virtual warehouses to query that uh, at scale. The other big piece of it is zero management. And so compared to your typical databases out there, with Snowflake, a lot of this is automated. So you don't have to spend the hours and times to be able, and hours and minutes uh, to be able to manage your data warehouse. And then the last piece that we're going to be talking about and focusing on uh, today is based on the unique architecture of Snowflake, where we separated this compute from storage. It enables us to do some pretty interesting things. And one of those big things is data sharing. So I'll talk about specifically about data sharing and the value of data sharing. <coughs> So what is the impact uh, of Snowflake data sharing? Uh, the first piece that I see that is really impactful is how people are sharing data today. Date, people are using, you know, at some points, they're sending emails with CSV files. We see a lot of customers are sharing up to an FTP site. Um, now with things moving into the cloud, we see that people are actually moving data up to an S3 bucket. Um, those are all kind of the typical ways that we see people sharing data. But we think that can be revolutionized with Snowflake. So one of the big key value points of data sharing is that when you're sharing data, you're actually not moving or copying that data. So you can think of it like providing access to that stored data in a provider account. The other value prop is um, on the consumer side. So we think of data sharing with the provider who's providing that data and then the consumer who's actually consuming that. Um, on the consumer end, you don't have to worry about pulling that data down, storing it in your own data warehouse. It's provided to you in an immediately queryable state where it's actually um, live. So as data falls into the provider account, it's immediately viewable on the consumer end. Obviously, Snowflake from the beginning, we've always had a big focus on security. So with data sharing, you've got all the security components of Snowflake. You've got the HIPAA compliance, all that good stuff. But also, coming back to the first point, is you're not actually moving or copying data. So it actually ends up being more secure. And then the last point is you've got the full data warehouse capability. So you can do all the uh, sort of analytics and functions that you want on top of this data share. So um, 
Here's just a quick diagram about how data sharing works. We think of data sharing in the concept of a provider and a consumer. Um, the story that we're going to talk about today in the demo is I am going to be um, an e-commerce site called The Look, and I'm going to be the, um, the one who's doing uh, analytics on my e-commerce site. Um, I have a partner uh, that I work with who has demographic information that can help me understand where my market penetration is in my e-commerce site uh, and how I can optimize that. So in the scenario for the demo, um, the third party partner will actually be the provider and me, the e-commerce site, the look will be the consumer. So how does this work? Um, the provider in their Snowflake account will go in and create a share. They can choose what they want to share, whether that be tables or secure views. And they will publish that up and add consumers to that share. On the consumer end, you will see a list of inbound shares, which you're able to create a database from, just like any other database inside of your warehouse, uh, that is immediately queryable, queryable. Now, the unique thing about this is if you have multiple consumers, you only have to manage that all in one database. And then based on security measures, you can actually give each one of your consumers access to their own slice of the pie. And then once you've set up all this great data sharing, here's where the partnership comes into play with Looker. So you've got this great data that's been shared with you, but you want to make sense of it. Well, let's go ahead and bring in Looker Blocks. So Looker Blocks allow you to access that data and do your analytics on top of it. Maybe there's some modeling that you've already um, pre-generated on, uh, on top of this share so that not only are your consumers getting access to this data, but they also have a way of quickly being able to visualize and make sense of that share. All right. <clears throat> So uh, quickly, I want to talk about two different sharing models. The traditional way to share data uh, and what we release data sharing with was being able to share data as I am the Snowflake uh, provider and I'm sharing with consumers who are also Snowflake customers. We saw a need from uh, our customer base that, hey, I'm sharing this with 100 different consumers. Not all of them are Snowflake customers. So how can you help me? That's where we developed the reader model. The reader model, you can think of it like sub-accounts inside of the provider account, and they have access to read that data. They can't write any new data to it, but they can access and query and do things on that shared data. And all, of that, um, all the credits that can get consumed in your reader accounts get billed to the Snowflake provider account. We don't get in the business of charging um, or how you guys charge your uh, readers for that. I see two kind of main facets for charging back. One is charging by credit and then also charging on a, on a monthly premium service fee. So today what I'm going to uh, demo is the traditional sharing. Um, if you guys have questions afterwards, I'm going to stick around. I think we'll spend some time for Q&A, um, and I can talk to you more about kind of the different models for sharing. Um, all right, so let's get into a, a quick live demo. All right, so um, talking about the story again, just to give you a quick recap, um, I'm an e-commerce site. I have a Snowflake account. I'm doing some interesting analytics on my e-commerce. Here's a quick look at um, the database and a table that we, that we have here. Um, Bruce is going to do a great job. He's going to show you what that data looks like visually. And we're doing some great things, but we really think we could do better with our market penetration if we brought in some demographic data. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my uh, other account, which is the third-party account. Um, and I'm going to provide a share of some demographic data. So here's a quick look of uh, the demographic data. It's in this, uh, the look database here. And what I'm going to do is, as my account admin, I have this option to create shares. So I'll click on my shares button here. Um, I can see a list of my inbound and my outbound shares. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and create a new share. So I'll call this uh, demo, demo data. And I'll come in and select which database that I want to share. So I want to share the look. And then I also can choose which tables inside of that database that I'd like to share. So in my public schema, I'll go ahead and I'm just going to share all of them. I'll go ahead and hit apply. And I can also give it a comment if I want. We'll go ahead and create that share. Now, the new UI of data sharing came out uh, a few weeks ago. We're really excited about it. 
Previously, you had to write this all into uh, the SQL code, but now I've got this nice UI wrapper on top of it. Uh, you can also can review that share. We'll go ahead and hit done. And now you can see that we've created a new share. Now we haven't shared it with anyone. We can add consumers here. So if I wanted to add consumers, I could add consumers and choose either full or reader accounts that I want to share this with. Um, just to show you what you used to have to do, you used to have to do all of this in the SQL code. Um, but now we have this UI to make it much easier. <clears throat> so if I come back to my shares now, you can see that I've shared this with my uh, PM3 account, which is my e-commerce site. I'm going to switch over to my e-commerce uh, account now. And when I come into shares, you'll see that I have a new inbound share demo data here shared by my demo 43 account. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a database from that. We'll call this demo data again. And I'll give access to this specific role here. And we'll go ahead and create a database. Once I've done that, now you can see that I have a new database, demo data, or if I come into my worksheets, you'll notice that I, if I refresh this list, you can see that I've got demo data. It's got that um, arrow indicating that it's a shared data set. And if I go and I come in here, I can preview the data and see that now I have direct access to be able to query that data. So I've set up this great share. This is awesome. Now this is when I bring in my lovely sidekick, Bruce, who's going to show, now that I've got this share, how can I use Looker blocks on top of it to actually visualize and make sense of it? Thank you, Brian. OK, so for pretty much anybody that's ever seen a Looker demo, this dashboard that we're looking at should be pretty familiar to you. This is the, the Look, which is our fictional e-commerce site. Um, and it's generally what we use for all our introductory demos. Uh, and you can see, you know, as far as fictional e-commerce sites go, you know, this one's pretty successful. Our year-over-year -year sales are on a steady increase. Um, but there's definitely room for improvement. And one of the things that we can see right away um, is that uh, our sales are, are heavily clustered in the East Coast. So what we'd really like to do is figure out how we can get more market penetration in the West Coast. And what would help us with that is to be able to get some demographic data, uh, see you know, who the users are that are buying in the West Coast, where we have the best market penetration, and where we have room for improvement so we know where to spend our, our marketing and advertising budget to try and increase that. So all we need to do to uh, bring that data in is I'm going to go over here. And for those of you who haven't used Looker blocks before, uh, a Looker block is really just um, a zip file that you get off a Git repository. And if you take a look at the, uh, the Looker blocks directory, there's over 100 blocks that are there already built. Uh, and the blocks are a combination of the modeling and visualizations so that for these sources that, are already, that already have blocks, uh, your time to value is, is nearly immediate with that. Uh, all you have to do to, to make use of the blocks is we're just going to uh, drag these model files our LookML files into our IDE, which also includes uh, visualizations. So we have uh, this LookML dashboard that we've just brought in. And so now we have the uh, demographics data block. And we can immediately just go in and view a dashboard that's built on this demographic data. So this is a, an excellent way for you to be able to take your domain expertise and best practices bundle them all up so that somebody that's going to be using your data can right away have a great template of what to work from. So what we really want to accomplish here is we want to take this demographics data and we want to marry it with our, um, our e-commerce data. And in this case, it's really simple. I'm not going to show you the modeling, but all we had to do was join based on zip code. We have zip codes uh, for where our users are living, and then we have zip codes associated with this demographic data. So what we're able to do is take those, those two data sets together now that they're all in Snowflake um, and build out a little bit of a model to see where it is that uh, we're having success and where we could do better. So what we can see from, from uh, this dashboard is that the higher income that users have, the more they're spending on our site. 
but we really have very poor market penetration with those users that are in the higher income brackets. So uh, down here we have just a map that shows for the Bay Area what our market penetration is. Uh, and the green means not very much. And so you can see that um, you know, we don't have very good market penetration in the Bay Area. But since we have a live connection to this demographics data, you know, we can take the knowledge that we've gleaned from looking at this dashboard, uh, change some of our sales and marketing, or sales and advertising strategies to go after these higher income people in the Bay Area. And then hopefully over time, we're gonna be able to come here come back to this dashboard and we'll be referring to current demographics data. And, and every week when we look at this, we want to see less and less green on this. So that's really all there is to uh, using shared data to augment what you have. Um, and we're happy to take any questions. <laughs>